our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. The gateway to a wetland area in the south of France. This is just one site of the Tour du Vallat Research Centre, where scientists from the Mediterranean Wetlands Observatory watch and learn in the middle of the Camargue. They've built permanent hides so the natural inhabitants aren't disturbed. For the countless species of birds that have found a safe haven here, it's an abundant source of food. Wetlands are equally important for their role in recharging the water table, protecting river banks and the seashore, in drinking water supply, or water used for livestock. So wetlands play an essential role in the water cycle. And water is life, everyone needs water. The Tour du Vallat Observatory has been there for more than 60 years. The waterlogged plain is formed by the River Rhone Delta, and it benefits from some specific natural conditions. These research programs are aimed at balancing human activities with the heritage of the natural world. But reconciling man with nature is not always easy. Economic interests often bring with them a power struggle, and researchers have to know how to diffuse tensions and propose compromise solutions. To be credible on the ground, we use a network of non-governmental organizations, associations and experts who can give us pretty reliable raw data. We try to communicate in plain terms, to be the interface between science and politics, so people include protecting wetlands better in their political agenda. It's one of the observatory's big difficulties, bridging science and politics. The nerve center for this crossover is in a small Swiss town called Glan on Lake Geneva, which is home to the international headquarters of the Ramsar Convention on Wetlands. Back in the 1960s, People, a number of people became increasingly concerned about accelerating destruction of wetlands um, for economic growth purposes, for uh, drainage for agriculture, for industrial and urban development. And they felt that there was a need to bring governments together to form a concerted action to address this issue. And they worked with governments to create what is the first of the modern global environmental treaties, the Ramsar Convention on Wetlands, which was signed in 1971. The Ramsar Convention is named after the Iranian town where it was signed. Today, 160 nations have put pen to paper. Its role is to collate all available scientific data and to redistribute them through its established communication links between member states. To get the big picture, images from space can capture the Earth's constraints or problems linked with catastrophes like the 2005 tsunami, when orbiting satellites really came into their own. Well, people who are responsible for managing wetlands and monitoring what is happening to them um, it's often very hard to find out because they're difficult places to get into and work in. And this is where the view from above, the satellite imagery that uh, are pro is uh, produced and processed uh, through, for example, the Glob Wetland Project, uh, becomes incredibly helpful and important to them. The Glob Wetland Project is the brainchild of the European Space Agency. It has two main weapons. ESA's in-depth experience of mapping extreme events and the Envisat satellite. The idea is to supply Ramsar and workers on the ground with as much information as regularly as possible. We are working in an area in a 100 kilometer belt around the Mediterranean, but just in northern Africa and Middle East. It is from Morocco to Turkey, the blue points are the test sites or the wetlands that we will map. 
We have a local project in Jordan. It is in the Ramsar wetland Azraq. Here we have Jordan and the location of the wetland Azraq, which is here. And Azraq is under a specific pressure. The optical and radar instruments on the satellite provide data that can be analyzed in several ways. And that can end up as detailed maps full of information on the natural environment and the changes brought about by man. The situation that we had at the beginning of the 90s is that the wetland more or less disappeared and the habitat for the animals and for the plants was destroyed completely. So what the people on site would like to do is to reconstruct the wetland. It's far from finished, but the first results are already clearly visible. Our images will be important for them to get an information about the situation that we had 30 years ago, to get a basis for, their, uh, for the planning of the reconstruction. There's a lattice work of observation satellites encircling the Earth, sending back streams of non-stop data that can be turned into photos and maps. The transformation happens at Ezrin, the European Space Agency's research institute in Frascati, just outside Rome. It's the satellite data gathering hub for ESA and other partner countries and space agencies. It is important to have a view into the past. So we are lucky that we have satellite images from 1972 until now. And so it's important for the people on site to have such information, such historical information. The Ezrin Image Bank has been growing since 1972. It forms a kind of time map, indexing the causes of change in the areas of interest. The maps are also a key component of the Glob Wetland project. The work is meticulous and highly detailed, but it has to be done. And soon, the scientists will have new tools to help. We are really happy that we will have new archives in the future from the Sentinels. The advantage of the Sentinels is the high repetition rate, the always availability of the data, and it is a better resolution than the data that we're using now. The family of Sentinels has been born from a need to phase out Envisat, currently the biggest observation satellite orbiting the Earth. A deal between ESA and the European Union will see the Sentinels operational by the end of the year. These next-generation satellites will provide high-resolution radar data and optical images covering the spectrum from visible light to infrared. So what on Earth are the scientists on Earth doing? Are they simply confirming what's being seen from space? I don't know if that's the case or whether it's the other way around. That is, if the satellite observations give us something. For instance, with the demands on water, wetlands have disappeared rapidly. And for us to quantify the extent of these areas in the Mediterranean region, that's where satellites come in. All inhabitants of the swamps and marshes around the Tour du Vala Observatory come under the microscope. Researchers are studying their feeding, their reproduction and their impact on the environment. And no species is left out. This is a crayfish native to America that was introduced by man. Since the 1970s it's taken hold all over Europe. Actually, the invasion began in Spain. So Spain and Portugal have very, very dense populations and are experiencing lots of problems. It's true that the damage is transmitted by irrigation works and especially the growing of rice. We think they have a specific impact. impact. 
The American crayfish study will produce information that will complement the satellite mapping. For example, understanding why certain riverbanks are collapsing and characterizing those collapses will lead to identifying where these unwelcome crustaceans are living. The research here is not only useful for the Camargue, but for the entire Mediterranean basin. Scientists and engineers from wetlands all over North Africa and the Middle East come here very regularly to look at how we study and how to protect their own marshland. So yes, we can benefit our colleagues from the 27 nations with all the research done here. 27 countries are currently involved in the pilot project Glob Wetland 2, which for the moment is limited to the confines of the Mediterranean basin. The European Space Agency has plans to expand in the future to cover much bigger areas of the globe, because as the world develops, the issue becomes more and more pressing. Wetlands provide huge wealth of resources and value to people. Uh, many trillions of dollars a year, the natural infrastructure for our water, for all the different purposes we use it. Yet at the same time, with increasing um, prerogatives for, for economic growth, industrial development, an ever-increasing human population in the world and the demands to feed them, uh, the pressures on wetlands are still with us. And of all the challenges set to pile on the pressure in the decades to come, Global warming will test the abilities of all species on Earth to adapt. <laughs>